Welcome to another review. We're going to be doing Neon Genesis Evangelion episode 10. Uh, this episode is going to be an interesting one because <clears throat> um, the titles for both parts are the same. So we'll work under that structure and we'll go from there. The first part of the episode called Magma Diver. Alright, the first half of this episode kind of works out like a lot of the early parts of the episode. What happens is we have an, in a situation where Ryoji Kaji is taking Asuka Langley, sorry, charmed, aren't we, um, out shopping. What Kaji doesn't know is that Asuka wants, her to go, wants him to go shopping with her for bathing suits. Now, this is going to be uh, something of a little bit of arguments between people because Kaji is well in his 20s and remember Asuka is still 16 years old so this relationship is always kind of creepy. Kaji downplays it and he's, he's just a mentor but as we know through the episodes Asuka wants more. So basically she's shopping for bathing suits because there is a big school trip and she's ready to go. Problem with the episode is, or Asuka, with, unbeknownst to her, is that she found out from Misato that she can't go. None of the children can go. Shinji can't go, Rei can't go, because they always have to be on standby just, because, just in case of an angel attack. Now what we find out is that there is not an angel attack in this episode. Actually what happens is in the first part of the episode we find out that they find an angel in its pubescent stage. In other words, it's still in a cocoon, but the issue is it's inside of a volcano. There is a very hilarious um, part of the episode where Shinji's studying and Asuka's in her baby soon. She's like, hell, if I'm gonna go swim, I'm gonna go swim. And there's a very interesting part about, you know, very fan service part where they go into the theory of thermodynamics. I won't go into it here. Watch it. It's pretty hilarious if you're a kid. Uh, if you're an adult watching it with a kid, it might be a little bit uncomfortable. I never saw it as that. So, take that for what it is. Um, basically they find out that there's an angel in the volcano and they have to go get it. The crux of the end of the first part of this episode is that they choose Asuka to go get it. Now Asuka has to go get it and she's like, you know, she's all for it, she's rough, she's tough, she's proven, she thinks in her own mind that she is the best Ava pilot. She has the best unit. She's the smartest, because as we find out, she's actually a college student as to why they're making her go back to high school in Japan, especially since that's not a language that she's comfortable with. As we find out with when she um, talks to Shinji about school. And then what they do is they give her a new plug suit. They put her in a... They put Unit 2 inside of another outfit called the B2, B2 unit. Um, Asuka's like nothing happened, N you know, this suit plug suit feels the same, and of course she gets subverted because what happens is the plug suit is vastly different and she's kind of ashamed of it. That's pretty much the end of the first part. Then we get to the second part of this episode which is also called Magma Diver. The only difference is there's no space in between Magma and Diver. Now one of the interesting things that they get to at the beginning of this episode, kind of, is that we kind of see that while the country of Japan is on lockdown, 
Kaji's talking to someone. We're never really introduced to her, even throughout the whole series, who this person is. But we know that Kaji's talking to someone outside of Nerve. That will be something that will kind of and kind of not be explored in future episodes. But basically the crux of this episode is that Unit 2 in the B-Type 2 equipment has to go down into the lava to fetch this basic egg of a unit. I mean, egg of an angel. What happens is the angel wakes up and there's a fight scene inside of a volcano. The visuals in this episode are kind of distinct because of all the magma and all the red, it's kind of hard to make out a lot of the visuals. Um, the solution to how to defeat the angel, because the angel wakes up, is also, you know, harken back to in the whole conversation with Shinji and Asuka about thermodynamics, but in this episode, a lot less fan servicey. I'll just say that. Um, the episode kind of ends. Actually, there's there's a part of the episode where, while Asuka's diving in Unit Two into the magma, a lot of the people are telling Masato to stop. That we need to stop this operation. Can't go any further. Masato insists it does. Asuka insists it does. Both for different reasons, though. We won't go into Masato's reason until a little bit later on, and this will also include a lot of the stuff from the earlier episodes where they were talking about Risco in one episode. I believe it was episode 5 or 4, whichever one they fight the angel where Shinji has Toji and uh, Kensuke inside the unit is like, don't do this for your own selfishness which is what Risco tells Masato and Masato's like no I'm doing this for everything else once again more stuff that's building towards when we get to fleshing out Masato as a character later on so the ending ends in a kind of hilarious moment not only hilarious but definitely very fan servicey where all the characters go to a hot spring um, we find out that Masato has a big scar in her abdomen area and when Asuka asks her, ask her about it she tells her oh you know don't worry we will tell you in time and they kind of have a bonding moment but not quite they end in a hot spring this is in Japan and this is an anime you can only imagine the type of fan service we're getting but that's pretty much it for this episode we get our standard, you know, angel introduction in the first half, angel battle in the second half, a lot more introductions into the psyches and past of the other of some of the characters, a little bit more into Masato. We we see Asuka's personality more that she wants to be the one to defeat all the angels. She doesn't want any help. She knows she can do it all. Shinji is kind of in the background of this episode not really doing much until like the final moment no yeah until the final moments of the angel battle Rei Ayanami is hardly in this episode she just kind of is there um, that's about it we get kind of an interesting conversation that I didn't get into with um, Gendo and the council where he talks about you know we're gonna capture these this um, this egg of this egg angel and the the council tells them we don't want a repeat of the second impact once again that stuff that's foreshadowing and at the same time not because of what the becomes of the council later on but once again we'll get to that when we get to it that's pretty much it for now that's episode 10 thanks for watching um maybe i'll do episode 11 tomorrow We'll, we'll try to do it sometime this week so I really originally wanted this series to be really short and do it all at once but yeah what can you do with time until next time